Hey guys, it's Chris from Marsman Gaming, and today I'm excited to take a look at Forza Motorsports with you. In this video, I'll light up the good, throw shade at the bad, and give you my final verdict on the game. Developed by Turn 10 Studios, Forza first drove onto the scene in 2005 and was praised for its realism, throwing you behind the wheel and really making you feel like a race car driver. They followed a successful every other year schedule, Call of Duty Take Note, up until 2017 when they put their big boy pants on and went for an open world adventure in Forza Horizon. And both Marsman and myself can vouch for them that it was a very fun experience. Now five years removed and back from their hiatus, Forza Motorsports is continuing to find success in the video game world. This is a fun, fast-paced racing simulator that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat the whole time as you try to go as fast as you can without crash. And I'm a perfect example because as soon as that countdown hits zero and they tell me to go, man, I start driving as fast as I'm running away from my feelings. And let me tell you, I'm driving pretty damn fast. So before I start crying, let's get into it. And if you like these type of videos, please like and subscribe. All right, let's light up the good. Turn 10's attention to detail has been impeccable throughout the entire Forza series, and it shows in this game as well. Everything from the look and sound of the cars to how the cars and track interact with each other shows you the amount of effort and love the team at Forza put into the game. And that brings me to my first positive point, which is content. In a day and age, where some big titles are lacking content or straight up unplayable, Forza comes correct with a good campaign, an extensive multiplayer, and over 500 cars and 20 maps. The Builder's Cup is where you'll start your career as a race car driver. The campaign isn't super in-depth, but it is fun and allows you to focus on what the game is meant for, which is learning how to race cars. There are a lot of different types of races to jump into, and all of them are unique with different rules and car types. Plus, new tours with new unlockables and rewards will drop in the future to expand your career. Moving to multiplayer, you'll find Rival, which is nothing more than you on the track, alone, racing against a translucent enemy car trying to beat their lap time. I found this play option to be very interesting and enjoyable because the only thing you have to focus on is yourself and the best lap that you can do. And hopefully that beats your rival's lap. There's no getting spun out. There's no car pileups, which can be a relief because let me tell you, there's going to be plenty of spinning out and hectic crashes in the featured multiplayer. Well, that's where you'll go when you're having a great day and you just want to ruin it a little bit. Of course, I'm talking about the public but competitive online play, which ranks you in two different categories, which is driving cleanly and driving well with an added penalty system cracking down on people trying to sabotage your game. This is where I spent most of my time in my playthrough. And although sometimes frustrated, I was hysterically laughing watching people slam into each other and fly into walls. But the featured multiplayer is torn down the middle for me, both good and bad, and I have the perfect clip to sum up everything at the end of this video. But first, let me get into the greatest thing about Forza. The biggest positive has to come from the actual cars and the ability to tune and make it the exact car that you want to drive. The progression and monetary system changed a bit with this installment too, and I'm all for it. The mindset is more of a build it, not buy it. You do have regular money to buy cars, but then you also have CP or car points to level up that specific car. It seems they want you to earn the car that you really want to drive by leveling it up and unlocking upgrades. The way you earn more CP should be pretty obvious, but this is done by driving safely, overtaking people correctly, and cutting corners right. Essentially, getting better and learning how to drive correctly on a racetrack will gain you more CP. And one cool thing that they threw in there as well is that you can actually refund your car points and redistribute the points and go with a completely different build for different situational races. Now that we've shined some light on the good, let's throw some shade on the bad. And we're going to stick right with the featured multiplayer. As soon as the game downloaded for me, it was all about hopping into a race with 15 or 20 other people and just going as fast as I can. So that's what I did. I went to the multiplayer, went to go choose a race, and I saw a 27 minute wait time. And then I went to go look at every other race and they all had a starting time of 25 plus minutes. I couldn't believe it. Now, once I actually joined, I was able to see that you really are supposed to practice and take three qualifying laps to get yourself a good starting position. So I understand giving drivers time to get a feel for the track. Maybe I was just unlucky when I joined joined, but I don't think that all races should start at the same time. They should spread them out. So if you turn the game on and you do want to race against other people, you don't have to wait 30 minutes for one race. Now, unfortunately, the worst part of this game is going to be felt by the new unexperienced driver. Forza did the right thing by a driver score and a safety rating. But if you start in the lower tiers, it is very hard to get out of. This is due to car collision, mainly by people who are beginners and don't really know how to drive on a race. And that's no diss to the new drivers. You always have to start somewhere, but it might be frustrating to people who have one lap to go and then they get spun out. And I can't tell you 
how many times that happened to me. And at some points I just turned the game off because I was furious having two laps to go and then someone makes me run into a wall. So with that being said, the long wait times and constant car collisions in the lower tiers might turn some people away from a big part of the multiplayer. Now my final verdict will be short and sweet. If I were to weigh the good and bad against each other, the good definitely comes out on top. Now, for someone who doesn't care about cars or racing, the bad might outshine the good. So I do believe it does really depend on the person playing the game. But for anyone that has Game Pass and even a slight interest in cars or racing, this game is definitely a good download. Keep in mind, it is strictly a racing simulator. And with that, I give Forza Motorsport an 8.6 out of 10. Oh, and I didn't forget, here's the clip that sums up my hilarious and hectic Forza experience. Enjoy. What do you guys think about Forza Motorsports? Are you guys ready to get spun out in multiplayer? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So if you guys like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Chris from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Deuces.